a woman here who is uh, sitting in a kitchen, uh, unfortunately dead in the middle of her kitchen floor. The woman is Barbara Barnes, found dead by her husband Fred. Got some ironing going and she had just taken something out of the refrigerator and well there she is. It's a mystery. You'll notice there's crumpled newspapers in the doorway. There's a box of matches that's about a half inch long that has matches in it. A uh, calendar on the back wall that's turned to April of 1944 when uh, the death happened. 1944. Barbara's been dead a long time. She exists only as a doll in the nutshell studies of unexplained deaths. They are dioramas, basically 1940s virtual reality that are used to teach homicide detectives to uh, how to investigate crime scenes. These 18 doll houses were created almost 70 years ago by an heiress, Frances Glissner Lee. She made death investigation a profession. Before then, there was no particular training for homicide detectives. At a time when women didn't go to university, Lee pioneered a new craft. People did things that now we realize you really shouldn't do, like uh, disturbing the crime scene, moving a weapon or the body. It was a woman's hobby that became a trade norm. The point is, though, that you don't need to walk through a crime scene and disturb things to learn things. You can learn an awful lot just using, using your eyes and using your brain. Today, the method is required training for Baltimore City homicide detectives. The dioramas are still used in an annual teaching seminar. We have a saying in homicide, you have one opportunity at the crime scene and you have to do it right the first time. Detective Robert Ross recalls learning from the nutshells almost a decade ago. You always reflect back to what you learned with the nutshells because you have that opportunity again. It's almost like you're, it's almost like an out-of-body experience with your crime scene. You're floating around the crime scene. You're seeing what it is with the nutshell. Nobody touches anything inside of a crime scene until it's been photographed. It's got to be documented through photography and, and notes. Attention to detail is crucial, and that's what detectives look for when using the dioramas. They have molded Baltimore homicide detectives for years, and they have, they have really taught us how to, uh, how to approach a crime scene in a, in a professional manner, in a scientific manner. And uh, I'll tell you what, we're, we're very lucky to have them here in Baltimore, very lucky. Each house built on a scale of one inch to one foot. Each one of these uh, cost what it cost to build a real house. She, they, each one of these dioramas was between, you know, thirty-five hundred to six thousand dollars to complete. Handcrafted pieces mimic real life. Tiny readable newspapers copied from real stories of the day. Dolls wearing unique clothes. Every stitch done by Lee herself. What she said was that everything you see actually happened, but not necessarily in the same context. A man apparently hanging in a barn. Another woman dead in a bathtub. The causes of their deaths remain a mystery. But the solutions are kept secret. They're kept under lock and key, and only one person in the building has access to the, to the solutions. And he, he guards them uh, very protectively, and not even the chief has read the solutions. Barbara Barnes' death is contained in a nutshell. But solving the crime will require thinking outside the box. In Baltimore, Kelly Anderson, Fox 45 News.